Hey guys, welcome back to Golden Aesthetics. This is Artemis Dolgan. It's been a while. It's been a while. I've been very busy. And uh, I'm going through so much uncertainty in my life right now. And I enjoy, I enjoy sharing with you high and lows. And I guess I'm going to bring you into the topic of today's video about semen retention, about um, avoiding women for one single purpose of uh, self-achievement and realization of your deeper real potential. Um, my life has changed tremendously since the beginning of the war in Ukraine. Um, I don't know why, but it just marked the whole new beginning of a new chapter in my life. And I always told myself that I will have to go through a sort of a roller coaster in my life um, from zero to 100, from 100 to zero, real quick. And when I was on top, when everything seemed great, I, for some reason, I always knew that this is not going to last. That I will have eventually go through a certain reset in my life because I wasn't at my final destination. And I guess a lot of us will have to go through reinvention process throughout our lives, not once, but many times. Fortunately, some people, they get to discover what they love, what they're good at at a very young age, and they become great in doing that and make money with it, make a great living, great career. I've been searching for myself all my life. And you know what? I'm recording this video and I'm doing all this stuff. I'm going to be sincere with you. Purely out of desire to put this out there, to share my experience with this lifetime that we all share. I think we're all special if we really embrace our individuality, our difference our potential and I feel like I embrace my individuality and my personality most of my life I've been kicked out from college um, from school I've been bullied all my life uh, people picked on me they still do you know on the internet and so forth and I always embraced it even though it was really really hard I never could understand, like, why me? Like, why it's me? Why my parents are coming to school? Why I am getting bullied? Why people are pointing finger at me? And it's because I embraced my individuality and I embraced my own self-expression over anything. And it's not easy because if you don't comply with the majority, if you don't comply with the rules, with expectations and social norms, you'll stand out. And people will have no choice but point a finger at you because they can't comprehend what they see. Or maybe they're jealous. You know, in my porn days, I've done a lot of wild shit. And sometimes I come across with people that would just take my photos and send them to my friends, my family. And I'm like, why people are doing it? Why people are hating on me? Um, because they recognize your power. And they understand that you're dangerous. And that's why they want to take you down. You know, some people see your power and they just don't want it to exist. They want to destroy you. Um, and I always thought, like, why me? But as I said before, I always knew that I'll have to carry a big cross. And I asked God for a big cross. The biggest cross. Because with the biggest cross comes the biggest strength. And... At this point in my life, I feel like I'm going through this reinvention process yet again. I've done so many fucking things, so many different experiences I've been through, so many different businesses, so many different hustles. And after I torn my biceps, my life also sort of like turned upside down. And I'm going through a great reset. And it made me look at things from a different perspective. I think... We can turn all the bad things that happen to us into our superpowers. 
something that makes us a lot stronger, than something that makes us go a lot, a lot further. And I think if I didn't get to go through this censorship that I'm going on Instagram, being shadow banned, people can't find me. I don't know why it's happening to me. I put out the best content. Even here, this video is probably going to get, you know, 500 views or something. But who cares? Because I don't think it's all about the views. It's all about the likes. It's all about the comments. It's really about the impact that you make on people, not the impression. And I also... Uh, you, you know, I'll go through this as an artist because I am an artist first and foremost. Even through uh, the bodybuilding day, nobody was able to do or come closer to the videos about the artistic side of bodybuilding um, that I've done and I've put together. And my vision is still there. And now I apply it to something completely different, which is my life and the extreme sports. And I love recording and documenting my experiences in a very artistic, very videographic, cinematic way. That's what I want to say. And um, in the past couple of years, I spent so much money. Like I spent so much money doing, traveling, recording this content. And um, I get nothing in return. No followers, my accounts didn't grow. Uh, no impressions, no engagement. It's all the way down. And it's so easy to disappear from the human uh, attention, you know, from your subscriber attention, because um, there is so much content out there. There is so much competition out there. There are so many funny, entertaining things out there that people get consumed. They forget about you real quick and you become irrelevant. And now social media has power to do that to people. And I've put myself in too much dependency from social media, my business and my network and um my platform of sharing my my art, you know, my videography. Um, I know that life right now is telling me and everything that's happening to me right now to move into another direction. Something that I always wanted to do, to be in films, to be an actor. That's why I moved to America in the first place. That's why I moved to California in the first place. But I got stuck, you know, because I'm really good at everything I do. If I put my mind to something, I'm good at it. And I was really good at bodybuilding and putting this whole thing together. And I got comfortable with the money I'm making and was making. And the situation I was in, my living situation, Hollywood Hills, it was awesome. But life, and I knew that it was going to end. I fucking knew it. I felt it. And I knew God was telling me that this is not, bro. You will have to hit the bottom again. And you will have to hit it hard. Because that will promote an existential growth. And that's what's happening to me right now. You know, I have to rearrange a lot of things and start shaping new ideas, new thoughts, new patterns, do different things for business. So I modeled my place, you know, the other day, the other night, I was I repainted this 4,000 square feet by myself. Every single corner, every single ceiling, you know, redid my bathroom. Like I was all covered in dust and paint. And none of you got to see it, you know, none of you got to know it, what goes behind the scenes and how hard, you know, someone can work when he's with his back against the wall. You know, some people fold, crumble, not me, I drill a fucking hole in that wall, but I'm not going to crumble, I'm not going to fold, I'm going to work, and I don't shy away from any work. You know, it's a little bit disappointing when you're 38 and you look at other people on the internet that succeeding and making all this money and you know they are not worse than them you're better than them you ought to work them in so many different areas even more talented but there's a certain degree of integrity in me and honor that I can't sell out and I can't just go with the mainstream agenda and mainstream trends and mainstream demand I, I want to keep my uniqueness you know, I want to keep my individuality and not change. And then in times like this, I put all my will. I direct all my will. I focus all my will on a task in hand. And I just want to slowly to bring into this topic of semen retention because I've practiced this before when I left the monastery, when I lived in the monastery for two years. I restrained myself from masturbation for a few years. 
I didn't, I wasn't really a, um, a virgin back then, you know, so I didn't really know what sex was, but uh, I was still, you know, you go through a very intense periods of masturbation where you start getting to know your sexuality. And when you're in your, you know, when you're 14, 15, 16, that's when it's really start happening when you, in, especially if you're exposed to pornos and, you know, um, and then before this injury happened, I got in really bad shape of my life. You know, I was, I really looked amazing. It, it, you know, I've been in different stages, but that was very functional, very athletic, very aesthetic, very, very good physique. I really enjoyed the way I looked. I worked really hard for it too. And I did restrain myself from having sex for about seven months. Um, I didn't smoke weed. I also quit smoking weed about three months ago. And uh, I felt like I just need every single bit of my energy, every single bit of my attention, every single bit of my focus, every single bit of my time to be put and directed towards my goal and achieving my goal. And... You know, as you grow older, I think you realize the importance of time. And you have to understand that women, hot women, they're always going to be there. Regardless of you having money or not having money, or you working or not working, hot bitches are always there. And they're always going to be available for you if you're a successful man. And, you know, today I met this kid and trained with me. It's like, oh man, I'm... Not a little kid, he's 34, but he seems a very, very young energy. And um, he's like, oh man, I'm going out tonight, you know, I'm going to this club. And uh, he's not where he wants to be in life. Financially, status-wise, you know, not there. But I just, man, I just want to get laid, you know, tonight I want to get some girls. And I'm like, bro, why? You know, I've been there too. I've chased, I've chased tail all my life. That's why I've been in porn movies. That's why I've been doing all this pickup artistry. That's why I've been going out like crazy, trying to meet as many women as possible. Because my testosterone was so high and still is. And I mean, you know what? And uh, I've spent so much time and I spent so much money on women. I invested so much of my effort and creativity in getting laid and getting pussy and getting all kinds of pussy. And as you grow, I'm 38 years old right now, I still have the same thirst, probably more of it, you know, because I really love sex. And I love quality sex. And I think with age, you, uh, and with experience more so, you, you start valuing um, a connection, passionate, animalistic, fire-like connection when, when you just, lose yourself in the process of making love with another person you just dissolve in that chemistry it's cosmic it's orgasmic it's unbelievable like you can't explain you can't put that in words especially when you were both healthy you're studly you're uh in good body you know you you just fit you know that sex is a completely another level because it's very intense it lasts longer and that's what i was always looking for at some point during orgasm i realized i felt like how much energy, how much of this intense, passionate fire that is within me I give out. And I not necessarily stay with those women. They just come and go out of my life. And um, as I said, like before, when I, before the injury, I was so intensely focused on, on my training that I completely give up sex. And I've noticed the amount of focus and energy and dedication and discipline that's been developed in the process of it, it was the results were outstanding. You cannot just address it like, oh, just I'm not gonna fuck and I'm just gonna get jacked. This is not what's this is not how it works. We talk about time, we talk about the resources, we talk about the energy, we talk about the effort, you know, that you save yourself by not going out, but not sitting on dating apps, but not meeting fucking hoes anywhere you wanna go, on the internet, whatever. Um, you know, the online dating is, is fucking bogus. You know, you can meet some good people on there, no doubt. But man, the amount of time you invest in online dating is bananas. How many fucking faces you have to swipe on? 
You don't even know if it's a real person or not. You don't know if that picture has been altered or not, photoshopped, you know? And, and then you start, you know, going, throwing lines and you're going on a date and then you don't like the girl because it's not what she looked like on Instagram and, and this fucking time lost and it's never going to come back. For what? For just trying to get laid? You got to be at the point in your life when women come to you. When your status screen for you, when it speaks for you, when you make a statement, when you walk into the room, when you walk into a bar, a club, wherever, when you make a statement, when you have fucking real money, because you know the film movie Scarface, this is in this country, you gotta have money, when you have the money, you have the power, when you have the power, you get the women, and this is how it is, and you know, I wish somebody told me this when I was youngster, when I was chasing pussy all day, every day, going out every night of the week. And you know what? I was in Vegas for Christmas and I was with a really beautiful woman up there. And uh, as I was driving back, some other chick texted me from San Diego. Super hot, young, young, young Latina. I fucking having a weak spot for Latinas. I'm on fucking... Three o'clock in the morning, bro. I'm turning around, going towards San Diego now. I'm thinking as I'm driving, man, you crazy motherfucker. You just had sex for a few days straight. What the fuck are you doing, bro? But just thirsty. And I caught myself in this situation so many times in my life. I remember being in Miami. I just had sex with one chick. And then I'm going to fuck another girl because I just want to put more notches in my belt. And it's fucking 4.30. I know I'm going to be up at 7 on the set to film something. But I'm like, no, I still want to get it. Now I get up there, blah, 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 my shit not even, not even great. You know, like, why, dude? You're not a fucking driving bed. You're tired. It's not, the work is not the same. And you start asking yourself a question, like, like just like I did in San Diego, which was like, you know, before Christmas. I mean, on Christmas Day, actually, right after Christmas in the 26th, something like that. And uh, after I had sex with that chick in San Diego, I was like, man, that shit was fucking bogus. I spent five bills in Airbnb on getting wine, this, that, driving up there. For what? It's like nonsense. And as I was driving back to LA, I made a decision that, man, wasting this much time is absolutely not worth it. And we'll get into biological, you know, spiritual benefits of um, semen retention and not watching porn. But when you come down just to economy, <laughs> you know, not chasing women is probably the best case scenario for you, especially if you're not in the place where you want to be. I know how old you are. I know where you stand in your life financially, um, spiritually, mentally, just in general. But if you're not happy with who you are, avoid sleeping with women. You just spend so much energy and so much stamina that you can really focus on putting your shit together. And I know it's hard to give up because we've been sexualized by social media, by internet, um, by women in general too. I mean, what's trending on Instagram the most? Pornographic images. You know, half naked, most naked women, you know, spreading their legs, putting their tongues out, pork turking their ass, you know, turking, wearing bikini to the point where you can really see the whole thing. And those videos get the most views. Why OnlyFans is popping like crazy? Because men are lonely. I mean, by OnlyFans, you could tell the state of our society, miserable, lonely, depressed. That's why bitches make so much money on there. And it really affects their mind too. It really affects their demeanor, their psychology. And when you look at today's women, when they feel a thirst to post every other minute on Instagram, their ass, their tits, their lips, their face, Photoshop, chills, it changes their, their psychic, their character, their attitude. And they're always constantly thirsty for validation. And then their ego is out of proportion. How the fuck you can be in a normal relationship with that person when she's constantly, constantly seeking validation? 
the inferiority complex, the lack of confidence in those women. I mean, their behavior, even the voice that they have nowadays. Um, not judging anyone, I could care less. But in my world, in my opinion, I want a hustler. I want an ambitious woman that has modesty, that has principles, that has values, that have honor, that's fit, and that's independent. The girl that can bring a value to my life. The girl that doesn't look forward to parasite off of me. And I've met so many chicks here. I've met so many chicks there. And all of those girls are looking to find a rich, successful daddy that's going to take care of their problems and take care of themselves. And, you know, the whole escorting thing and the whole prostitution thing is becoming normal. I mean, because just like OnlyFans is becoming normal. I saw mainstream boxers on mainstream TV come out with OnlyFans logos on their shorts. I mean, I mean, you've got to have some dignity, dog, to do that. But, I mean, most of the athletes don't even care. Most of the athletes are sellouts. They love what they do and they're going to do anything possible in order to finance it and make money off of it. You know what? I could have done so much more with my platform, especially back in the day with the supplements and all these other things. Shipping shit from China, putting a fucking label on them. You know, shout out to Lions, not cheap. Fake brand, fake motherfucker, fake dude. Can't stand people that try to fucking use American patriotism to sell their Chinese garbage. Just wanted to say that. Um, I didn't sell out. You know, I kind of stay remain loyal to my principles and, and my views. But I could have made so much more money. But that's not the topic of this conversation. Um, would I date a girl that doing OnlyFans? I don't think so. Not in my life. Maybe when I was younger, to my 24, 23, maybe I would do OnlyFans with her. Possibly. Who knows? But at this point, my mind's so mature and so thirsty for intelligence, so thirsty for intelligent conversations. And I want a girl that's going to sleep on the floor with me if it's needed. I'm not going to look at the guy that's driving a Lamborghini or a Ferrari. You know, has a big chain and a nice mansion. A girl that doesn't care about that. She only cares about your personality and your soul and your presence and your charisma and just who you are. And I had a girl like that. I had a beautiful woman, but I fucked it up. And until this day, I couldn't find a chick. And I've been with hundreds of them, really, in the past three years. And... uh it's very difficult to find a good woman these days. So I don't feel like it's necessary for you to go around and spread your seed all over the place because it's a macho thing to do. No. I always thought that it's such a manly thing to do to fuck as many women as possible. And I always thought that, like, I always try to justify cheating because I cheated on every single girl I've ever had. And I'm not proud of it. Um, but now I come to a realization that being a man is actually being able to control the thirst, to control the desire, and not being a slave to it. That's what makes you a free man. I think man is described by the extent of his freedom and his ability to resist desire and not being a slave to his desire, but being master of his desire. Because the man that is master of his desire is a master of the world, of his world, of his reality. And I think there is... A profound meaning to semen retention. That's why all the spiritual fathers, monks, they all restrain themselves from having sex. Buddhists, priests, there is something very sacred about man containing his desire. And being a master of himself. And I've been off this for, you know, since Christmas. Now it's been, what, two months now? Over, over two months. And it's been difficult, really. And you start searching for all these different excuses. Oh, how's my prostate is going to do? Well, absolutely just fine. Because... I've been reading and I've been searching for uh, some scientific proof that maybe semen retention is bad for your prostate, but there is no proof of it. And I think the biggest 
advantage or biggest good thing about um, or advantage, whatever how you whatever put it, is your ability to stay focused and be in charge of your desire and investing that time and that effort in becoming the best version of you. Because I feel like if you're on the higher frequency yourself, if you really raise yourself up to being your best version, then you're going to start meeting people that are also on that level, that are also of that frequency. And you'll definitely start attracting women that are also on that frequency. Believe me, you don't want to have a hole in your life. I think there is a time and place for anything. When you're young, when you're in college, um, when you go out, you definitely... 100% should have sex and you should definitely meet women, but you shouldn't be obsessive and you always have to have priorities in order. And when you're, you know, in your 30s or your late 20s and you're far from being whatever you want to be in life, you just maybe have a decent job and you make decent money and you have weekends off and you can go out and get drunk and get a bitch, get two bitches, you, you're still not where you want to be and that's not going to contribute you're just running from the life that you have instead of working on the life that you want and that's what the weekends are for that's what the time is for from really focusing on yourself and and um sacrificing uh, that side of of life because as i said women is always going to be there and when you're successful you have such a wider range of choice of women and higher quality women, women that also can bring value to your life instead of just taking from you. And um, my training has improved tremendously. You know, I went into um, bulk mode because I lost a lot of weight, a lot of muscle tissue after the injury. And I haven't been into this side of... Uh, training quite some time i haven't been in a bulk in a long time i've been just really maintaining and just really slowly gaining you know lean weight uh through functional training and a mix of bodybuilding and um boxing and swimming and surfing and just moving um and right now i just feel like okay i'm just gonna dedicate myself about six to eight weeks to a serious bulk and i'm gonna sacrifice absolutely everything because i went to make my own training app. I want to put together some videos, training videos. Um, and I just really want to get my physique to the best possible version they can ever be at keeping it and still keeping it functional, aesthetic, mobile, agile, athletic. I decided to go into a bulk mode, get a little cycle of MPP test and GH for about eight weeks, gain weight, eat more food, do a little less cardio, not a little less, but quite a lot less, but still having my, my performance workouts, my circuit training, my swimming three times a week. Um, I feel like swimming is a very low impact cardio. It's great for, for you in general, for your cardiovascular system, uh, for your lungs, for ability. It's going to help your ability to stay in the set a lot longer. Plus, your joints are not getting as punished. So I think it's a very, very good form of cardio. That's why I try to swim three times a week, at least, you know, because um, I've also started periodiz doing periodization with my workouts of in terms of what comes down to cardio. But now my weight training, weightlifting has become the major focus. And it wasn't like this in a long time, really wasn't. And after the injury, I lost quite a bit of weight. And now I'm back to 200 212 pounds now. You want to get to about 225 and then cut down to about 200, 195 and just be ultra shredded and have the best physique I ever had. And it's doing great. And the, build, the training when you are not... Muhammad Ali was asking a question. What is the secret to your success? What is the secret to being a champion? And he says, being in bed by 8 o'clock at night without ladies, dodging ladies. And... You know, there's a practice in boxers and a lot of athletes uh, where they're not having sex. And I, I know that that theory was proved to be wrong biologically or whatever. But I think it, it is a very significant element because of the mainly because of the focus, mind focus, and the energy you get to keep to it for yourself and direct it towards things you want to accomplish. And Muhammad Ali was uh, actually an advocate of not having sex while in camp. And um, 
not having women, not sleeping with anyone, and just really focusing. And that's what's really separating you from the hurt, separating you from uh, other uh, men, is the ability to be in charge of your desire, but also be powerful and being able to get whatever you want at any time given. Um, it doesn't mean that you have to become antisocial. I think if you like really like someone in the street, you should definitely say hi, hello, uh, and get to know that woman. You know, if you really like her, get her number. But not chasing anyone, not trying too hard to get laid, to go out there and try to approach women and, and, and become dependent on sex. And it's very easy, you know, because when the more of it you have, the more of it you want. And I became a victim of it. And my training right now took to a whole, I mean, I went to a whole another level. I have a lot more energy. I have a lot more stamina. I have a lot more time, most importantly, towards myself. I was in the post office the other day dropping off packages for Golden Aesthetics. And um, if you get to watch this video up to this point, please check out my line and support me. really need your support at the moment. Um, and I saw this really beautiful girl. And she was, uh, I could see she was taking bags out of her truck. And uh, I came up and said, excuse me, do you need some help? She's like, yes, please. So I went and grabbed those big bags. I was like, what do you do? She's like, oh, I, uh, I sell clothing. I said, oh, is your brand? And she's like, no, I work for somebody else. And I fucking feel like, oh, shit, I want to, she's fucking cute. And then I think to myself, dude, shut the fuck up. Get the fuck out of here. You ain't got no fucking time, dude. When are you going to go out? You have to fucking train today. You have to work on the weekends. Now you got clients coming in. Now you have to fucking do online training. Now you got to work on this. Now you got to do editing. Now you got to record a voice. What do you, what do you, what do you, what is, what is your goal here? You know, I say, well, that's nice to meet you. What's the name of your brand? She gave the name of your brand. I said, thank you. And I left. And uh, I had to fucking restrict myself because, like, every, I was, you know, the other day I was driving too, and I see this fucking super smoking girl in, in her car driving, and I'm fucking speed up, you know, because we were in traffic and I was gonna even out with her and start talking. I come up and she's taking selfies of herself. And I'm like, oh boy. <laughs> you can see the car is banged up a little bit, you know what I mean? Because uh, she had like a dent, like a big dent in her truck and her car or whatever. The, the, it was like a little uh, SUV. I was like, no, that's not the type of girl I want to talk to her at the moment, you know, because this, it's like, oh, and then, then I just met this really sexy Ukrainian chick, and um, I look her Instagram, and she's like posting these videos of her dancing in the car for no reason, I'm like, man, bitch, you are, I don't want to fucking talk to that girl either, you know what I mean, it just became, I mean, they're hot and sexy and everything, and like, it was like, man, some good pussy up there, but... I was like, man, that's just not interested anymore. You know, like you, you develop this higher demand uh, from yourself, first and foremost, and that kind of translates and reflects on other people. And, um, you know, I, I, I helped when I was an altar boy, you know, I was in monastery. Um, I went to, um, to attend the mass or help my spiritual father do the mass in this um, women's monastery where they're not allowed to leave uh, for life. Once they do their oath, they're not allowed to leave the monastery. They they join the monastery, they live in there, and they die in there. They obviously don't have sex and whatnot. I mean, there's all kinds of things going on, but um, people that are really dedicated to the goal and to the, to the cause, they're very spiritual because they get to develop a different, a different gift um, within them because they sacrifice their desires and sacrifice uh, what normal people chase and consider as given, you know, and I feel like they direct that energy towards their spirituality and you could tell they develop a whole different side of psychic, you know, that they can tell and read your demeanor and read your soul and see what kind of person you are. I think uh, as human beings, we have many gifts and many um, and much potential to heal ourselves, but the knowledge is hidden from us, you know, and, and I know some people say this conspiracy theory, I mean, we've deliberately been, uh, our testosterone been deliberately lowered by the elites through food and um, climate and everything else, through air, through pollution, through fluoride in the water, and it's been done deliberately. So I feel like deliberately, they've been hiding knowledge from us in order to keep us in the chains of being a peasant and as much as i watch ufc nowadays and football all that bullshit all this roman circus you know i uh i understand more and more that people have been manipulated and controlled 
through consumption and entertainment, cheap entertainment, extremely cheap. And um, it's been done also deliberately to hide a true way of life from human beings. And I feel like it's very important to dig deep into yourself and to really isolate yourself from your desires and from society that doesn't go along with your expectations, with your uh, set, of, set of mind and truly seek a higher ground and then you will be around people that are also at the higher frequency as I said and mentioned before. And this semen retention thing, um, I try to dig deeper into it in order to understand the physiology of it and to see if there is any side effects, negative side effects for a man. But I couldn't find any. And it doesn't mean that you have to become in celibate for decades or whatnot, you know? No, not at all. It has to be a different and, and, and healthy balance, but you have to be able to be in charge of your desire. And that's what describes a man and what makes a real man a man is his ability to control his desire. Even if you, like, you know, uh, as I said, I, I thought like to have as many women as possible or like for a man to achieve it in his wife is normal because, you know, the desire to reproduce is so strong and, and it's a man, you know, in some cultures, women are cool with that. It's like, oh, it's a man. It's okay. He can do that. It's a man. But I don't think it's the case. If you dedicate yourself to one woman and you make her your wife and you make an oath to that woman, you make a promise to that woman, I think you should never cheat. I should you always being faithful and I've done it many times for me to speak but as I look back would I do it again no I won't because you can lose someone that you will never be able to find again someone that's so compatible with you someone that loves you so much just because of what because of some pussy because of a blowjob because of some hole that's worth absolutely fucking nothing the bitch would never sleep with you on the floor she will never share fucking bread with you she will never share a fucking cup of water with you. She will never bring you a cup of water with you. She will never fucking eat out of a fucking dumpster with you because she is there for your status and for your money and for whatever fucking thing she is, but she is not there for who you truly are. And you can really lose a person like that. And before you cheat, man, you got to fucking think, you know, if you're ready to lose the person. And that's not even about losing, but insulting the girl that really loves you. And I've, I've heard so many women before and maybe God fucking will punish me in the future and not give me a girl anymore again. You know, and I'm cool with it, you know what I mean? Because I know I deserved it. But I felt like putting this topic out there and, and, and speaking on it because it's something I'm currently living through at 38 years of age. You know what I mean? Like, this is my prime time. Um, but I felt like if I really become a modest man, then I will achieve everything I dream about. If I become a patient man, if I become a, a good man, and I'll achieve everything I dream about. And I think I'm on a quest of doing just that. You know, being a really good man. In every case, in very every sense of the word. And you know what, man? I, I just... Sometimes I try to find every single excuse, you know, to get laid. Because uh, my mind and, and my, my nature is, is seeking, you know, that expression of myself or that side of myself. And I keep putting myself back in check. And I find myself with a lot more time in my hands. And a lot more effective and efficient work ethic. So I really appreciate you staying with me and and watching this video and listening to me. And this is just who I am. Everything I just laid out, everything I just told you, um, without holding anything back, this is who I am. And I want to touch base just quickly on on porn. If you struggle with porn, if you watch porn, it means you have problems with confidence and I've been through that I've been I've been being hooked on porn at some point in my life I've been watching porn every day three times a day I mean when we explore your sexuality you become dependent on it but it kind of ruins your psychic you know expectation from women and um, it will can ruin your relationship can ruin your sex life and most importantly can ruin your character if you keep jerking off every day and you're dependent on this free dopamine you're gonna destroy your confidence, and um, you will lose the ability to really connect with women. And I think a porn shouldn't be, even though, like, you know, I worked in the porn industry, and, uh, you know, I remember these conversations, like, 
the guy that that was running website to say, do you know how many fucking lives we save? How many marriages we save? Because the dude will fucking jerk off and not fucking cheat on his wife. And you know how many fucking perverts are there? They're not gonna go and rape people. I mean, those people probably have those problems to begin with because of porn, you know, and because of sexualization and the creation of our society with all this stuff, you know. So I think porn is the negatively, it will it will have a negative effect on your psychic. You know, you can, you know, I'm not, I don't think, I think masturbation is something that human beings go through uh, naturally and there is nothing wrong about that. But if you become dependent on it in order to satisfy your need, non-stop every day and a lot of people the very dependency on, on porn and then they get signed up with these websites and only fans and they just lose their mind with it and it's not a very good attribute for a man to have you know to me the perfect image of a man was william wallace and i said that many times from the movie braveheart i i just watched it recently again and i cried it i cried I, when i was injured i was watching that movie and i cried i cried the whole movie because uh but the first time I saw that movie when I was a kid sitting on the tree and just watching it without able to hear anything because we didn't have a TV was our neighbor. And that movie became an example of a man that I always wanted to be. And I thought to myself, will William, will William Wallace do that? Maybe it will sound funny and cringe or whatever. But I just always want to emulate that example. And I failed. I failed miserably. But it always been a standard for me. And I think before I leave this earth, I want to achieve at least a little bit of that, of being a little bit of that man that was loyal to his woman, was strong, was a patriot, was modest, was honest, transparent, was honorable man. And as I look at that history and I look at the men that have been praised before and what is praised now our society is going backwards i don't know where it's going it's going up to ines it's it's crazy really crazy what's been promoted on the internet right now but maybe i'm old-fashioned maybe i'm outdated but i always want, want to be like william wallace and i always ask myself would he do that because i kind of set myself that type of a standard Appreciate you all, guys. Check out my line, goldenestadays.com. Um, I don't know if subscribe, not subscribe. This channel is pretty much not existent anymore. I feel like I have to start a new one. Uh, same thing goes for my Instagram. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying I'm going through this bullshit constantly where I get shadow banned and I fucking put so much work and effort and money into creating visually compelling videos. And then someone like DJ Khaled eats McDonald's and promotes this garbage and will get millions of views. And it's kind of frustrating. But... Um, this is a part of my journey. This is a part of my life. And I think it makes me a better artist. It makes me make deeper, dig deeper and, and now more go towards another direction that I always wanted to go to. And I think life and my destiny and the path that I chose in my life that has a heart um, is making me become a man that I'm supposed to be. I love you all guys. This is Artemis Dolgan. Till next time.